Dinosaurs. Our ideas of what they looked like and how they behaved comes from artistic interpretation of paleontological findings. However, paleoart may be giving us false impressions about the appearance and behavior of dinosaurs. There are many challenges in creating paleoart. For one thing, the skeletons and fossils that provide anatomical clues are usually incomplete. The greater challenge, though, is that the soft tissues of skin, muscles, cartilage, and feathers usually have long since decomposed, so the artists must guess about these features. The father of paleoart was Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins, a 19th century British artist who specialized in scientific subjects, including paleontology. His sculptures were displayed at London's Crystal Palace exhibition of 1853. This was the public's first encounter with dinosaurs. At the beginning of the 20th century, dinosaurs came roaring back to life on the silver screen. Stop motion animation and special effects pioneer Willis O'Brien was born in California in 1886. One of his early jobs was guiding paleontologists in the area around Crater Lake, Oregon. He made his first short film in 1915, The Dinosaur and the Missing Link, a prehistoric tragedy. Ten years later, he masterminded the effects in The Lost World. His most well-known and enduring project would be King Kong, which firmly established dinosaurs among the pantheon of movie monsters. O'Brien's pioneering work set the precedent for movies as our primary influence in thinking about dinosaurs. But does science support the cinematic ideal? Besides traditional methods of analyzing bones, scientists can now also examine the DNA of dinosaur descendants. Morgan Worthlin is a PhD candidate in the Behavioral Neuroscience Program at the Oregon Health Science University in Portland, Oregon. His lab specializes in bird genetics, and right now he's in the middle of a project comparing the genomes of birds with that of crocodiles. Well, we'll never be able to look at dinosaur DNA directly like they do in Jurassic Park, but we can study dinosaur genetics by comparing their closest relatives, crocodiles and birds. One interesting finding is that dinosaurs seem to have lost a huge percentage of their actual coding genes. One idea we have is that this loss of genetic material could have had the effect of streamlining the dinosaur genome, allowing them to spend less energy on replicating genes and more energy on having a higher metabolism and a larger brain. It's likely that dinosaurs had a lot of the same kinds of highly intelligent social behaviors seen in modern birds today. What does all this tell us about how dinosaurs looked? Paleozoologist Darren Nash and artists John Conway and C.M. Coastman have created depictions of modern animals using the same criteria usually applied to dinosaurs. These garish and emaciated interpretations of more familiar animals are highly suggestive of what may be missing from conventional paleo art. There is an emerging trend in paleo art featuring fatter, feathery, and vibrantly colored dinosaurs engaged in more naturalistic behaviors instead of just biting or eating. Here is a conventional depiction of Microraptor Gui, an ancestor of modern birds. Here is a more naturalistic one demonstrating a typical bird behavior. Here is a bloodthirsty T-Rex. Here is Sleepy Stan. Innovations in paleoart could potentially revolutionize popular perceptions of dinosaurs. Enriching our understanding of these ancient animals refines our understanding of the world and our own place in it. Ultimately, dinosaurs faced the same challenges modern animals, including humans, face today. Searching for nourishment and a safe place to sleep, protecting their young, and living their lives one day at a time.